Hello, I'm Junko Sato Palak. I had two solo exhibitions on the theme of meditation, one at the San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles in March 2013, and the other at the Atlanta Soto Zen Center in March 2014. In conjunction with these exhibitions, I offered a series of mandala stitching workshops and community interactive art installation entitled Mandala of Hope to commemorate the unforgettable disaster of the Northern Japan earthquake and tsunami followed by the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant meltdown on March 11, 2011. The devastation is far from resolved after three years. Mandala of Hope, community interactive art installation, is to commemorate the suffering still continuing in the devastated area of Japan. In the workshop, the group meditated, chanted, performed walking meditation, and engaged in deep silence while stitching mandalas, pondering on the suffering and the healing. By extension, the mandala of hope signifies healing wishes for all sufferings, thereby turning the deeply felt losses to creativity and to renewal of life. Actually experiencing a lot of what Junko was talking about uh, in terms of repetitive stitching and quiet and building um, up to something different than what one might, you know, have a result with if they were doing it, um, the chatting and so forth. But I, I've had a great time with this, and I think I'm going to take a lot of it home and, and put it to good use right away. And this was very, very encouraging and fulfilling um, for me because it kind of touched home. The year before um, the um, tsunami, I was there exhibiting a, qu a quilt at the International um, Arts Festival. I used recycled material. This is wool because at that particular time, it was cold when they had the tsunami. So this is representing like warmth for them, hoping that they can stay warm. This here is, to me, a target. They will always be a target of having earthquakes, you know, and tsunamis. As I started working on it, um, things evolved, and, and they sort of jumped out. All of a sudden, this dolphin tail appeared. And I thought of it as hope, friendship, all things very positive. The liberating part of this for me is I didn't have to perform. I didn't have to do anything. Anything was an improvement for me. So <laughs> if that was a, a good feeling. Um, what came to me even before we started the actual stitching is with all the things we've talked about with the yoga and then the reading from the book as well is that we're all, we're the same. We come from the same place. We're all the same. We're going to the same. Uh, we're heading toward the same thing. And um, in that way, we are all one. Fabric that just reminded me of kind of fire and chaos. And that's what, you know, I think of with the terrible disaster of the earthquake and tsunami. And when I was stitching, um, did this little square first, and I did a lot of stitching there, and I kind of thought of the ohm. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, it's funny, all the other stitches just fell into place as doing kind of double stitches. And I just kind of think, thought of kind of east and west, us and them. And I just kept thinking of how we can all be brought together, and just, that's pretty much it. I loved having some quiet while I was stitching. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm learning how to sew, so um, 
this was a good way for me to learn and to do it very intentionally and to put um, the energy that I wanted to imbue it with. And that was what was going through my mind throughout the whole time was peace. And the song that was going through my mind was um, Shalom, Shalom. And it goes on like that. So Shalom, peace. And I'm half Japanese and I grew up in Japan, so this is a personal, it's quite personal for me. I happened to be up watching Japanese cable. My first reaction was, it, this can't be real. You know, it, it's got to be a sci-fi channel. And so it was a very raw experience for me. But I tried stitching around it, but I couldn't, um, it, all I felt was chaos. Because the destruction of the tsunami was chaos. And uh, no communication, so everything was chaotic and things like that. However, within all this chaos and disaster and everything, um, there's that really strong Japanese spirit that they can get through this somehow. The stitching to me represented a kind of language, almost a staccato in music or semaphores in signals. So I tried to be as careful with them as possible. I love the stitching on this one because it uh, represents people and also the color that they must have felt, the grayness, the darkness, and then the sun. I practice yoga and I also meditate, so this is very meaningful full to me and I love the silence. When you ask for silence, I thought that was very important. This one is uneven and it sort of represents the unevenness of that time which was, as Helene said, so personal. It was so, I mean, it touched everybody. Thank you. And I, I do hope we do this again. We think it's very, very important. I wanted something bright, and I wanted something simple, because I think our lives, most of us, really are at the point where we're trying to simplify our lives. When this all happened in Japan, it was my birthday. I happened to be with a group in Asia. That feeling that, uh, you know, you go down in a vortex, and that's why I have this uh, uh, circle in the middle. It's still, to this day, I think, you know, people are suffering. They still feel confined. They still are not um, free, in a way. And uh, so that's what I tried to express with this. My childhood home was destroyed by a, the uh, storm surge from Hurricane Sandy. And there was 14 feet of water. And from my sister's report, there were three feet of reeds a mile and a half inland. Disaster mm -hmm. is everywhere and it is happening everywhere. There's still our center, we still have our center, and there are, there are forces holding us together, even if we can't see them. And so that's sort of what I was, um, and be, be that the good wishes of a room of people like this, I mean, we just don't know what's out there when things happen to us, but we are so connected that we can tap into that, and, and our center is clear, and it's there for us, and then there's all these stitches, like holding all these parts that are, and, and it was just a real answer to like my next step, like artistically, like my art as my practice, because I meditate, I teach yoga, you know, and I've, I've just wanted all those things to come together, and so this was a real, like art as practice, like really spoke to me today, and so one of the things I had as a goal for my practice this year was creating just a lot more space, and as I was furiously stitching, I thought I really needed to create a little space also. <laughs> so, a few stitches, space. So I just had to balance the two because I tend to weigh on this direction. So I'm a book designer, and I was working on a book for an exhibition that was going to take place in three different cities in um, Japan, the first one being Sendai, you know, ground zero. So when we all woke up, the team in the U.S. woke up to this news, we wondered, are we going to have our exhibition? What's going on? How are our friends over there doing? So we exchanged a lot of emails, and they were fine. They were in Tokyo. So um, 
this was about six months before the exhibition, so the exhibition happened, everything was great, and hopefully the visitors got some pleasure of looking at these Dutch paintings by Johannes Vermeer. So I took this piece that looks kind of like water, waves of water, and I took a transparent piece and I laid it on top of the water to sort of represent the tsunami. And um, then I stitched a labyrinth around the whole thing. I, it looks like concentric circles, but it's actually one line, a sort of a meditative um, prayer for the people of Japan. I have um, a real interest in Buddhism, and particularly Tibetan Buddhism, and studied a lot of um, Tibetan Buddhist artwork in college, as well as um, I was an art major, and so the two passions um, coming together was pretty cool, and uh, color influence, I tend to gravitate towards warmer colors anyways, but also um, it did kind of remind me of some mandalas and stuff in Tibetan Buddhism, but um, the main thing I thought about during the stitching was a lot about the process, and um, how therapeutic it is in, in meditation, and for me, that not only with stitching, but any art form really is um, therapeutic. And when I thought about um, victims in Japan and that um, natural disaster, the place my mind immediately went was the opposite of what I think Jennifer said about um, parents thinking about um, losing children. I think about being uh, a child without a parent because I lost my mother a few years ago and that's just a connection that I made was what it would it be like to come out of that without you know a young adult losing one of your parents or both of your parents right. and um, I just thought about what a therapeutic process it was for me to create and <laughs> sorry but um, same with stitching though is it's um, I just thought about dependent origination and interconnectivity like that. A whole other world away, it seems like I can relate to um, someone in what seems like a totally different situation, but really they're parallel. I had an opportunity 25 years ago to go to Japan to work for a couple of weeks and to take my son and to visit friends, including a friend of his that was there. And it was a transforming experience. The things we saw both in Tokyo and Kyoto were so incredibly beautiful and different from the things that I had been immersed in before. And I left the country with uh, deep respect um, on a lot of different levels for the people in Japan. And reminded me of that experience. But as I was stitching quietly, it reminded me of sort of the chaos of the tumbling blocks and things tumbling down and you probably can't see it this is all stitched with this little stitch that doesn't show on the front but these little tiny stitches that are on the blocks are like stars in the sky because of that blue background and to me that's a very hopeful I kept trying to imagine Japanese people now because I knew even when we started it was the middle of the night for them and now it's early morning and I tried to just tried to visualize them now and how this tragic event has become their story and how they are uh, stitching it into their lives and I do love all the words associated with stitching and how they relate to our life's journey. We have family that live near the area. But of course, when we found out, just found out about the earthquake, we didn't know exactly how far away people were affected. So we were concerned we couldn't get in touch with anybody because the phones weren't working. And all I could do was meditate and send good thoughts. And these are the colors I see when I meditate. So I like the, the gold, I like the transparencies. And um, I like the idea of um, squares and circles. So I didn't really plan anything, but I was just attracted by this fabric. So I um, ended up with a square, a circle, and then another circle, and a square. So, hello.
I'm a nurse midwife, so I have spent the large part of my life going around with my fingers in all kinds of places and measuring circles to try and figure out, oh, she's two centimeters dilated, oh, she's in three centimeters, and, and I, I understand through my fingers and through circles that um, this is the path that we humans have to come into the world through concentric circles that envelop us and free us and bring us into the light. And as my, my 94 year old mother is ailing and going the opposite direction, I see her going through the same circles as her words grow fewer and fewer and her sentences shorter and shorter and her vision and everything is becoming smaller and smaller. So I think this is the stuff that is normal for us and because the water of the tsunami scared the heck out of me, I, all my colors are watercolors and um, my stitching, you cannot tell from looking at it, but my stitching is in one direction going back the other direction, trying to frantically find your way away out of the water, find your north, find your direction to survive and come out alive. And I began to visualize hope, and that's what hope does. It just keeps moving you forward, moving you forward, no matter what is in front of you, you have that intensity. I want to get there. We are supported by spirit, we're supported by the earth, and I would want them to know that. Underneath all of us is the earth, and we have to live on this earth. We have to deal with what the earth does, whether it's tornadoes, tsunamis, earthquake, whatever. And it kind of represented that wholeness, but we don't see the wholeness. And when something like an earthquake happens, it goes like that. And these are the waves that are coming through, and maybe the purple waves are the tsunami waves, and the white waves are the waves of grace coming through afterwards. So even in the, the seed of despair, there always is hope. And there's always washing away of the old and into the new. So there's, there's, I'm sure there will be good things that come out of this as well. I chose uh, greens and, and light, bright colors to symbolize growth and um, healing. I've uh, endured some difficult interpersonal uh, conflicts in the last year, and so I was thinking about um, resolution and reconciliation as I was stitching. And this is my mandala. Um, I started on a very personal note, some stitches to represent my family of origin and uh, my current family. So we have five and three sort of represented there. And then um, the elements of north and south and west and east, um, each side of the piece. Starting from the south is where I started my my stitching, it's not where I am from, so I do have some northeast elements. It just became kind of personal that way. I made my mandala to represent the disruption that happened to the people uh, due to the tsunami, but I and also the uh, redness or the orange represents the power from the nuclear plant and the heat, but the blue brings together the ocean and the calmness. And I think the stitching for me was very calming, but it also means that this is for people. This is, this is what, these all represent the people who are putting things back together. And I also want to say something about the show. We all use circles. I found myself, as I began working on this, this piece, a lot about water. And I thought that the fabric would come to represent water, but as I got into the project, I realized that it was actually the stitching that became water in this piece, because the stitching is what connects all of these elements of life, just as water connects all of these elements of life.
My and name your is statement. Jorio, and this is my bird is flying like a bird, and the fish is swimming like a fish. Oh. Namasarvajna. Shut up. 